Okay, so the first one, the impact on elections and voters. So this is the thing. There are many things that can and will happen before the next general election. So it's really, really too early to tell what this series of events have uh, has done in terms of affecting electoral outcomes. A lot of times, elections are affected by timing, and they are affected by events leading uh, leading up to the to the actual uh, voting day itself. Uh, give you an example, not not long ago, just three years ago, although again that may seem like several lifetimes away, uh, 2020 general election, even the PAP admitted that they are, well, sort of admitted, right, that their strategy against uh, Raisa Han, remember her, Raisa Han, um, it sort of backfired because younger people uh, think differently about race. That was what Minister Shanmogam uh, said. So a lot of things can happen from now until then. So in terms of election results, it's really too early to tell. However, however, generally, I classify the Singaporean electorate into three main groups. And I have some numbers, some numbers uh, for them as well. Uh, one, uh, the first one is the extremely the pro-PAP camp, right? And I put this number to be about 35%. Where do I get this number? I think the 2011 presidential election is a good good gauge. So the ones who voted for uh, Tony Tan, they, they are the ones who are really pro-establishment. The ones who voted for Tan Ji Se, who was a candidate furthest away, uh, that was about 25%. So Tony Tan got about 34%. 34, 35. Tan Ji Se got about uh, 25 so the ones who voted for Tan Jin Se were really anti-PAP, anti-establishment. And in between, so I, I don't know how to interpret Tan Kin Lian's votes, uh, but uh, the Tan Cheng Bok vote, and Tan Cheng Bok in 2011 wasn't a Tan Cheng Bok in 2020. Tan Cheng Bok was, had just left PAP. So he was opposition, but still kind of PAP, right? So what you, uh, that, that, uh, group that voted for Tan Cheng Bok, what you can discern is that, or what I discern at least, they are the ones who vote, they lean towards PAP, but they are not PAP no matter what, right? So the 35% pro-PAP, no matter what the government does, there's nothing that would change their minds, right? Um, the anti-PAP, the, if the sky is blue, they will say, why didn't the PAP make it green, right? That's, and elections are not won or lost on those, on those groups. Elections are won or lost because of that middle ground, which I say lean PAP, right? For obvious reasons, right? PAP has been successful, material welfare has increased tremendously, and of course there are uh, obstacles against the opposition and so on, things which I have discussed in previous episodes, right? So this middle ground is the one that really matters. Especially, again, remember they lean PAP, but they are not afraid to vote against the PAP when it comes, uh, when uh, it comes to a point where they need to do so. Uh, so this middle ground, I think, if you look at the series of uh, incidents that have happened, uh, even though they are all different, right? Different. Redoubt, uh, Iswaran, Hot Mic, and uh, the relationship versus the WP's one relationship, I think overall, that is a net negative for the PAP. I think there is no way getting around it, right? Yes, the way they handled, you can see the way they handled uh, the Iswaran case, which I think is the most damaging. Is the most damaging. And by the way, all four are not uh, are not equal, right? So l let me deal with that before I say, uh, before I talk about the net negative.